who's ready for some good old controversy? So today we're going to be talking about the spider gene. Um, here in front of me I've got two ball pythons. First off, here's Sheila, who some of you may have seen from previous videos and from live streams and just photos and all that fun stuff. She is a pastel. Pretty common morph. Very pretty. It's not too different from a normal pattern-wise. It's pretty similar to a normal. It's just some of those um, dark browns are changed to yellows. This one's Sven. He is a spinner blast. Uh, that sounds like a really cool, obscure name, but let's break that down. This is a spider pastel pinstripe, is what makes this up. It's the spider in there that I really want to talk about. As far as I know, there's nothing wrong with pinstripe, and I'm positive there's nothing wrong with pastel, but spider, the spider morph has some issues. Here's a normal spider. Um, you can see, obviously, why they're bred. They're pretty cool looking, very pretty animals. Uh, very different from a normal. Not only their color, but also their pattern changes. So you can see why it would be a desirable trait if you just are looking at the pattern. But let's look at their behavior. These two animals here next to each other, they're, they seem to be acting pretty darn similar. There's not a whole lot of differences between the two. They're both kind of chilling, doing their thing. But let's, let's look at something here. Let's see what happens when I flip Sheila upside down. Not a flan, flips back over almost immediately. Where do you think you're going? Girl, no. Let's annoy Sven here a little bit and then flip him upside down. Much, much slower reaction time. You can see he's almost not even aware that he's upside down right now. He's sitting upside down. That's not good for a snake by any stretch of the imagination. When you're upside down, you're exposing your soft underbelly. And Sven's not even aware that he's exposing that. So if this was out in the wild, a predator would might scare him, might flip him over, and it takes him that long to get himself back right over. That's enough time to kill him, start eating him, and pay the bill. Like, I mean, that's ridiculous. There's obviously something going on here. Come back, please. I need you. Thank you. The most common exhibition of the issue with uh, spider genes is something called a head wobble. I personally am finding that I think the head wobble is one manifestation of a larger issue, and that being an issue with balance. As you saw, when he was upside down, he didn't even seem bothered by it. He was just chilling there, upside down. Once again, I flip Sheila upside down, and it's not her mobility that flips her over, it's just her. She doesn't want to be upside down. She has instincts that tell her that's not how I'm supposed to be, and she has this perception of what is up and what is down. This guy doesn't seem to have that. Uh, one of the saddest pictures I have on my phone is this picture of Sven. He's hiding under his water bowl, because why not? And uh, his head's sticking out, but it's upside down. For a ball python to be in rest, to be hiding, just relaxing, chilling during the day, and for their head to be upside down is really not normal behavior at all, period. Keep in mind that we are people and these are snakes, so I can't talk to Sven and ask him how he's doing today. I don't really know how severe this issue is and what is really going on inside his head. Like How, how, how impaired is it? Because we can only see by their behavior and that's a small window. So it's possible there's a lot more issues going on than we can actually realize. So these are the issues that we can see with the spider gene. I think I've made that clear that there are some issues. Uh, the question now is severity. Sven is a pretty mild case. If you go on YouTube and look up other cases of spider wobbles, you can see it's a lot worse depending on the animal. Some people say it gets better with age, as they grow older it gets lesser. Some people say that uh, it gets worse with age. So I don't really know if it gets better or worse, but I don't even necessarily know if that should be called into question. I don't know if we should be worried about whether it's getting better or worse, or if we should just be worried about the fact that it's an issue. Okay, so now that we know that there are some issues with the spider gene, the question is what do we do with that information? Some people, namely breeders, say it's entirely fine to uh, be breeding them because they look cool and hey, I mean, they're still eating, right? They're still eating, they're still defecating, they're still doing everything okay, they just act a little bit funny, right? That's all, that's all good. And then some people take not even a stance of indifference, but a stance of, oh, look how cute that head wobble is. And then some people like me don't think we should be producing spiders at all, period. Keep in mind that most people that are going to tell you it's totally fine to be breeding these guys are people that have been breeding them and have been making profit out of them because as you can see they can make some pretty awesome paint jobs. 
Uh, but are those paint jobs worth the neurological defects that come with them? Please keep in mind I'm not at all against morphs. My first ball python I got was a morph, and I don't actually have any normal ball pythons. Morphs are awesome, right? I love the fact that ball pythons come in so many paint jobs. But I don't think we should sacrifice their mental activity for paint jobs. I think that, that that's where I would draw the line. So back on track, most people that are breeding these guys are actually being finding them very profitable, so hey, why not keep on breeding them? They're fine, right? That's just getting your priorities mixed up and placing money at a, as a higher priority than it should be, in my opinion. And people that say it's cute to have a head wobble, I don't think I should need to explain why that's not okay, why I have an issue with that. That should be pretty obvious. I don't want to go into that one, that's just, that's just logic. If you don't see why that's not okay, then I don't know what to say. What can be done about breeders, though, that are still mass-producing these? Well, the first step is obviously not buying any more of them, because supply and demand, if people are buying spiders, then people are going to keep on producing spiders. If you're coming from a position where, oh, let's rescue all the spiders, right? I get that sentiment. I get where you're coming from. But just understand that that's not necessarily how business works. The more you buy, the more they're going to produce, because they're seeing that this is a profitable asset. Don't feel bad if you already bought one, because you don't know better. Breeders don't really talk about this as a problem, and not many people talk about it as a problem, which is kind of saddening to me. So you don't feel bad if you did buy one of these from a breeder or from a pet store or something. You know, you didn't know any better because no one's telling you, which is one of the reasons I'm making this video, because people don't talk about this enough, in my opinion. But uh, one of the things you can do to help is by talking about it, by sharing this video, by telling other people, hey, this is some issues, by doing research of your own. All that interesting stuff. But if you did really want to help out the issue, uh, you could take a step further from not buying them and actually go seek out one from an individual. If you're buying from an individual, like say someone puts it on Craigslist as a rehome animal because they don't want it anymore, that's very different from buying from a breeder. If you buy this from this rehomer, from this individual who's not a breeder, who's not a pet store, they're not going to go get more. They're not a supply and demand. They're not a company, right? That's not how they don't work by supply and demand. They're just trying to find a new home for their snake or whatever. You're not only helping somebody out by taking a snake off their hands, you're giving it a good home and you're guaranteeing that that individual will never be bred. It won't be picked up by a breeder or somebody else. That means trouble. So to recap, we discussed the spider gene, why it's bred because it looks really cool, but it also has some neurological side effects, namely the head wobble and, uh, in my experience, a little bit of a lack of balance and what is up and what is down. And then we've discussed a little bit about what you can do with it. Once again, I don't think they should all be euthanized like some people have proposed, but they should not be bred anymore and um, people just need to be aware of this. So that's, when it, that's really where it comes down to you guys. You know, this is one video, it might get a couple hundred views, it might get a couple thousand views if I'm lucky, but I'm not going to reach everybody. You know, I can only reach so many people, but each one of my viewers has the potential to reach people as well. So this is kind of a sad video, just pointing out some issues with uh, Common Snake in the pet trade. I'm sorry if this made you sad or angry, but I think I felt like it was an issue that needed to be addressed. Keep in mind, uh, I know there are other genes that have issues, I'm not just ignoring them, I'm not saying they're okay, I just am not knowledgeable enough on the others and I don't keep any other morphs that have issues, so I didn't feel it appropriate for me to make a video regarding those because I haven't actually kept um, anything other than the spider. And uh, let me know if you have any questions, you know, if I didn't cover anything or if you need something explained again, just ask me down in the comments. Please do. Don't forget to follow me on social media. Link in the description for that if you, you would like to. Other than that, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.